Athenian pottery is particularly famous for its elaborate figured decoration. And there are different styles. So there's black figure, black figures on an orange background. This is red figure, which is the reverse. It's red figures on a black background. Red figure's the later of the two styles. Uh, so it comes in towards the end of the sixth century BC. Uh, and is typical of Athenian pottery of the 5th and 4th centuries BC. Very richly decorated. And this is a really nice scene. This is a, what we call a warrior departure. So we have a Greek man uh, about to go off to war. And there's a woman there holding his helmet and his shield. So she's handing him his military equipment as he's about to leave to go off to war. She could be his mother or his wife. Uh, we're not sure here. Uh, we know the man's young because he hasn't got a beard. And it's standard on certainly 5th century Attic pottery. The older you are, the more likely you are to have a beard. So if you want to show someone as youthful, clean shaven. There's a lot of interesting things about this imagery. Uh, one of the things that strikes me is it demonstrates the social roles of men and women. Women stay at home. The female sphere in the Greek world was the home, the house, and that's the woman's realm. The men did all the outdoor stuff. And in Athens, outdoor is trade, politics is outdoor. The Athenian assembly met outside. Uh, you wanted to uh, philosophize, you're probably doing that outdoors in the Agora or somewhere, athletics outdoors and war outdoors. So there's a real sense that this is saying something about the roles of men and women. And I think if you're at a male drinking party, you're having your sort of ideology, your view of the world reinforced by this particular image. And a lot of these images do that. They reflect the values that fifth century Athenian males would have had. The other thing I like about this is it's very evocative. Uh, it might relate to Greek literature, and I'm thinking in the Iliad, Hector has to go out and fight Achilles. Andromache, his wife, hands him his helmet. There's a very moving passage because Hector knows he's going to lose. He's going out to face almost certain death. Uh, but it's almost that a man's got to do what a man's got to do moment where the weapons are handed over. An educated Greek would possibly have that story in mind when they're looking at this image, but it's not necessarily mythic. It could be something from the everyday experience of an Athenian. Uh, I think the city of Athens in the 5th and 4th century BC, there were only about two or three years when that city wasn't fighting somewhere or other. Warfare was endemic in the Greek world and the Athenians were always involved somewhere or other. So every Athenian citizen is probably having experience of warfare, whether they're rowing in the Athenian fleet or fighting in the Athenian army as a hoplite. So I think there's a lot does the emblem on the shield tell you anything about yeah, that? Um, not necessarily. Uh, we know that some people, particularly earlier on, where you've got these massively influential aristocratic families, they might have an emblem, almost heraldic emblem, that refers to their family. Uh, but by the time of the sort of democracy, um, that's less likely. The Spartans often had the letter L a lambda on their shield because they're Laconians or Lacedaemonians. So the Spartans might have had a more uniform shield design. We know the Thebans like putting clubs on their shields because they're associated with Heracles, whose favorite weapon was a club. But the Pegasus here, I'm not sure. Uh, and whether that's just the artist liked Pegasus. This vase is painted by a recognized artist. He's called the Achilles painter. And this is something else with Greek painted pottery. Uh, there was uh, an Oxford professor, Sir John Beasley, who pioneered a whole way of studying Greek painted pottery where he claimed to be able to recognize the hands of individual artists. 
Now, some Greek pots are actually signed by artists. Mm. So someone might say, or the potter might say, I made this, and you'd have a name. But even without signatures, Beasley said he could look at the style of the paintings and he could group together the works of one artist. And he was adopting something that art historians have used to recognise paintings. So when a painting's by the hand of such and such, Beasley was doing the same. And this is a painter called the Achilles Painter. Uh, there's a little bit of controversy about Beasley's approach. Uh, I think most people agree with it. Uh, and he produced these massive volumes where the works of different painters were grouped together. Uh, was one of his major contributions to the study of uh, Greek art. But it's a wonderful thing. Yeah.